So strings in IDA are something that really confuses a lot of developers, especially new developers, uh, because it, with most programming languages, you just have string. That's it. You just have character. That's it. IDA gives choices, and those choices do not really line up in the way that most developers would think. The IDA string and the, uh, say, C string or C sharp string or Python string are really, really different. I'm going to have to start this out by first explaining that Ida separates characters into three different types. Ida does use Unicode internally, but it's how they are how the characters are represented that uh, is a little unusual. The base character can represent up to uh, I don't want to put this. Essentially, the ASCII character set. It's as if it had an upper limit of um, of eight bits. The wide character is as if it had the upper limit of 16 bits, but the actual characters used are, again, Unicode. Uh, you, it's a little bit platform dependent, but uh, you know you could easily be dealing with 8-bit characters, and then anything that would need the full 16 bits gets the... Uh, oh, what is it? What, what does Unicode call it? The... It's that little extension thing, but just to say that the next character is going to be represented with, you know, full 16 bits instead of uh, just 8. Uh, so it does make use of the uh, UTF, the Unicode, what is that, Unicode Transactional Format instead of the older USC, because these sound a little bit like they're using USC, but it, what, what this has to do with is the... Uh, the enumeration that's used to represent them. Uh, and then similarly, wide, wide character is the full thing. So this option, while seeming a little bit confusing, does allow you to uh, have a little bit more control over what, uh, how much space this is taking up. Now, Generally speaking, it's a pretty straightforward decision. If you're doing like desktop or server-based programming, use wide, wide character. Simple as that. But IDA has its roots in de um, embedded development. Uh, very specifically for military systems, but it's a solid uh, um, embedded language. And so for embedded systems especially, you don't want to be using these huge things. You want to use the absolute minimum necessary. So at least for English-speaking countries, or even for most Latin stuff, uh, most Latin-based stuff, that is, character is enough. Wide, wide, our wide character will use up a little bit more stuff, will cover quite a bit of languages throughout the world uh, without using the full space that a wide, wide character will. But, like I said, if you're doing uh, desktop or server programming, wide, wide character. Simple as that, you don't even need to think about it. The base string works the same way. String is an array of characters. Wide string is an array of wide characters. Wide, wide string is an array of wide, wide characters. Now, the way arrays in IDA work are they are of fixed length. You cannot make them longer. You cannot make them shorter. So, even though it's not written, it is a fixed string. And I'm going to refer to that as such throughout the rest of this. 
Now those are the easiest to work with, but they do have their roots in, um, or at least the, those involve the less typing, least amount of typing to work with, but they do, they do have their roots in Ida's uh, embedded history. So, well, 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 we'll start this out as just the really simple hello world. I know I've done tons of other stuff. We're going to finally do a hello world. Just to explain all the different strings Ida has. So we're obviously doing a, just a desktop thing here. So I'm going to use the uh, wide, wide text IO. If you're just working with strings, it would just be text IO. If you're working with wide strings, it would be wide text IO. But then it's just a simple put line, hello world. If we want to declare this as a variable instead of a literal, we can do hello world. I mean, you name this, whatever. Now, what I mean by a fixed string is that this length here, which it was able to determine just based on the what, what value is assigned to. This length cannot change. This variable here can never store a string that is shorter or longer than this. And I can demonstrate this by trying to reassign this. So if we do something of the same length, say hello, uh, I don't know, hello bacon. I, I, This is fine. Th that assignment is valid because it's the same length. But if we try to do something like hello everyone, you can see it complains because the length is totally wrong. And we can even try to run this and it very obviously gets a constraint error. Because the attempt to assign fails. We said, well, implicitly, we did say that the length would be, what is that, 11, 11 characters? And this is definitely longer. Similarly, if we try to go shorter, this also fails. So the string type is generally what you're going to want to use if you're just uh, directly outputting text or if you're working with embedded environments, where saving as much space as possible is important. Now, if you are coming from other programming languages, the string that they provide does not obviously does not work like this. It can be resized. And the reason for that is a little bit of a technical matter. Uh, I might do a little deep dive on that in another video, uh, just because not everybody needs to know exactly why that happens. Um, it, it is kind of interesting, though. But then, we also have uh, a bounded and super bounded string. I'm not going to get into super bounded, know that it's basically the same thing. Uh, We can use those by calling ida strings, and then we're still going to be using wide wide here. So it would be wide wide bounded. I think that's the package anyways. We'll find out. And then the type it provides is unbounded wide wide string. Now, Similarly, if you just needed an unbounded string, it's just 
unbounded string. You just remove the wides. We do have to do one little thing just because this is a string literal. And we want an unbounded string. So this is just to unbounded wide wide string. I think that's everything. I haven't worked with these in a while because these are mostly for something else. But unbounded wide wide string is undefined. Why? Uh, yep, I have forgotten a few things. So, I'm going to go run, check exactly what's in that package, and get back to this. Okay, so I think I got it. Um, there's actually a generic package inside of this. I, like I said, I, I haven't worked with these in a long time, uh, but that generic would need to be instantiated. So, let's do... Uh, 132... And that was called, uh, what was that called? Generic. I think it was generic, un, or generic bounded strings. And then it would be the length. I think that's what it was. Uh, identifier expected, digit expected. So, generic bounded length. No. What? What? Why? Which which column are you complaining about? 17. Oh, is it because this starts with a number? Um... Yeah, so that was just because it started with a number, and now if we use this, uh, why, why do you do this? All right, let me see why this isn't working now. This is probably obvious to most of you. You can tell what I normally work with. So then we just need the put line, and that was from uh, I think it's done like this. Uh, or wait, um, now I'm I'm getting ahead of myself again. Uh, for bounded strings. When you want to uh, print them to the console, what, what you do is convert it back to a, uh, a fixed string, like this. And, right, uh, we do need that again. So, where's that? Uh, so we still needed this, I shouldn't have removed this. And we do get hello world. Now, unlike with the string, we can actually go about this. This works because a bounded string sets a maximum length and actually allocates the entire maximum length. They might be saying that's not efficient, but that is what databases do, which is one of the biggest reasons to use this type of string. It makes working with the database much easier because you can set the same constraint in your code as you have in your database. And so then, then you avoid any issues with the database freaking out, sending an error back to you like, hey, I can't, I can't handle this. This is too long for this specific field. 
The code can catch it ahead of time, and that cuts back on network traffic, not to mention make the application seem more responsive because you're getting the error immediately and they can, can handle that as opposed to sending it off and getting the error back. Uh, you might be able to tell from the way I uh, name the string, uh, yeah, name the string, is uh, this can also be useful for terminal applications. Now, a lot of modern terminals especially have uh, ways of handling uh, exceeding text by wrapping them around, similar to what we do with word processors and internet browsers and everything else nowadays. But you can't always guarantee those types of environments, especially in embedded environments you have really basic terminals that might not implement this, or you might have to implement this yourself. Uh, so setting something like this uh, for uh, a display where you're doing fixed width uh, fits fixed with characters and have a set amount of columns on screen or if you have something like a TFT display if you know how many columns you have on that you can set this and then uh, it'll help you if you enter uh, if you in your code enter to uh, too long of a string it'll warn you about that or if uh, for instance you're printing information and that information is generated somehow, it, if you wind up with too much on a line, you can handle that exception and, you know, like wrap around manually yourself. It's unfortunate, but hey, let's face it, embedded programming, you're implementing a lot of things yourself. That's just how it is. So these are obviously not something most people are going to wind up working with but if you do a lot of stuff with databases or uh, fixed width uh, fixed column displays these are very very useful but then we have like I said I'm not going to get into the super bounded strings that's it's almost the same thing some slight differences if you really need these you can look up the difference it's not really worth mentioning at least for this but for most people working with strings especially wanting something that behaves conceptually like the uh, strings from C Python Java everything else basically what you want is this the unbounded string. This refers to a string which is flexible in its size. It can shrink, but it can also grow. Uh, yeah. So I'll show two different things. One is if you are going to be using a lot of stuff with regular strings, uh, you may just want to convert the occasional unbounded string to a regular string, and in that case you'd want to still be using the uh, this package. And we get that, but there's also uh, what was it? Data string. Uh, and then was it why? I think it was text I think that's what it was called. Totally don't remember. Uh, wait, let's remove this. Holy crap, I remembered it. I've literally never used that package in my life and I've remembered its name. Nice. Obviously that is <laughs> that is not pleasant to write out though. 
but uh, we can reassign this to a shorter string and everything's fine we can even assign this to a shorter string and then extend on uh, what was a lot longer by well, not really a lot three characters but still what was longer than the original uh, string this is totally fine it, it The amount of space that this would use up is quite a bit more flexible. It's harder to predict. So especially for embedded environments, this is a really bad thing to use. But like I had mentioned at the beginning, for uh, desktop and server programming... Actually, no, I didn't mention that. I was talking about Wide Wide for that. But Unbounded is extremely useful for desktop and server programming much in the same way, where you have memory that you can afford to use up... Uh, and you also don't have very strict constraints where everything needs to be predicted. You're not working with a real-time system, at least most of the time on desktops and servers. Uh, you're just generally trying to get things done efficiently. Real-time and deficient aren't quite the same thing. Real-time is more predictable. Unbounded strings are not predictable. But these have the power, the features, the flexibility that you would expect to see uh, from a string. It is a little bit unwieldy to go about typing this all the time. As you can see, though, for unbounded strings, bounded actually has this as well. You just have to be careful, but uh, there is concatenation that can just use a string literal. You don't have to convert this to an unbounded string. The concatenation handles it internally. Um, anything else I really want to mention here? No, that should be good. Uh, one thing I will just leave off... Uh, mentioned before I wrap up uh, there is a package I have written the text package it's literally just that text it, all the children packages are for other stuff uh, that does help a lot with handling of text of strings there's a lot of additional concatenation operators that are useful uh, useful for desktop and server programming specifically. You would not, do not use those in an embedded environment. They're going to cause a lot of uh, uh, you really want to be quite a bit more explicit in a embedded environment, but that package is very useful for heavy text processing on a desktop or server environment. So if you're doing a lot with text in Ida and are finding a little, quite a bit of this a bit cumbersome, that package does make it quite a bit easier. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful, and hopefully it's clear which type of string and which type of character you should use when, because I know it's quite complicated in Ida. There's, what, a total of 15? No, 12. 12 different types of strings in Ida, and it's pretty heavy. Uh, but, at least for me, I find it pretty straightforward which you want to use when, and I like having the control over which, because really flexible strings in an embedded environment is... Uh, uh. If you've liked this video, if you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing and maybe even hitting that little not notification bell. Oh my god, I need to learn to speak better. Uh... Have a good one.